10 items that Anna has in her food styling kit. You're not gonna wanna miss this. If you're a wedding photographer, you shoot food. If you don't think so, that's why your food looks so bad. So get over to thesliderlens.com, click on the online courses, buy that food photography, and your food work will look so much better. Hi, this is JP Morgan. Today on The Slime Lens, I've got with me... Anna Lee, food stylist. And Ed Rudolph, food photographer. You might guess we're gonna talk about food. We're gonna look at the 10 things that Anna Lee would never go anywhere without in her food styling kit. So let's look at the 10 items. That's your kit you can put together be able to create a food styling kit. So what's number one, Anna? Number one would definitely be my knives, uh, my chef's knives and my serrated knife. They cut different things and different functions. So why the white? Is that just like a oh, ceramic? This one is a ceramic one. I just really like how thin the blade is. The serrated one are really good for uh, things like tomatoes, uh, bread, Things you need a little sewing motion. You can't. You, you, though with those kind, sometimes it tears the skin. Mm -hmm. So yeah, my knife. Number two will definitely be the tweezer. I have all kinds of tweezer, different shapes, different um, angle. Uh, that's just kind of act as my finger, but tiny. So when Getting I to when I things yeah. and to change things and to move Tweak things around. Things. That's why. So tweezers. Tweezers That's for a tweaking. good one. I didn't think about tweezers. I mean, do you when use I, those? When I try to get my big hands in there, it just doesn't work, and I end up doing more harm than good. Yeah. So, tweezers are definitely a good thing to use. I, yeah. Most people wouldn't think of tweezers. I don't think I would have thought of tweezers. Not for food, yeah. Yeah, that, no. that makes a lot of sense. But a lot of fine dining restaurants, um, Michelin chefs nowadays, they all use tweezers. Because really? that gives you that precise spot oh, where you want to arrange your food. Oh, yeah. okay. So tweezers. Number two, tweezers. Number three. Number three will be my assorted brushes, different size and shapes and texture. Um, so different brushes. These all look like different types of brushes, though. They've got like food brushes, paint brushes. Yeah, pastry brushes. Pastry br brushes. Makeup brushes. So I, I got them from all over the place. Not so not only. Um, so those this kind because it's so soft, it's very good for. Um, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting the brush off the table. Yeah. Um, it's very good for brushing crumbs and tiny flower par particles. It's just like um, we it's put makeup. Clean up. Yeah, we, this is actually a makeup brush. Mm -hmm. So anything powdery, it is one that's really good for. What's the smaller paintbrush small for? for? Small paintbrush is, is kind of similar to what tweezers do. You just want to paint very small area um, while the big one kind of will get everywhere. and. You don't want it when things, you don't want things too shiny all over the place. That's when I go in with a small one. And then those are just very standard, bigger brush when I brushes. need a yeah, bigger surface. Yeah. Yeah. Those are great. All right, that's number three. Number four. Number four will be my squeeze bottle. Squeeze bottle. Um, so squeeze bottle will be good for, say, sauce when you're trying to have a little bit of mayonnaise or mustard condiments poking out of a burger or sandwiches. Mm -hmm. This is a very good tool. Just kind of tool. put a little bit on there, a little bit on the burger, a little Correct. bit. A lot of times a food stylist, you know, if you want to have like say Thousand Island dressing coming out of a burger beneath the patty, rather than doing it where they actually put it on the bun and then put the meat on top, they'll just put the meat on top and then sort of pipe in a little bit of that there, so right. it's just that perfect sort of ooze out. Number five. Number five would be my spray bottle, water spray bottle. So this is very good for misting water onto salad, herbs, any sort of grains. Um, keeping it fresh while it's under the light so it doesn't keep dry it. out. Yeah. yeah. So a spritzer, yeah, a lot of things. Like yeah, we were doing the spritzing of the uh, for the condensation on the bottles. Right. Right. So. Yeah, I like my tool rather tiny, but full, so some, some full sizes have, have big, big ones. Big yeah. Mister, just depends. I just like things small. That seems if you're getting in on, it seems it makes sense for it to be smaller <laughs> if you're getting on yeah. set and trying to get in there. Number six. I guess it will be my assorted Q-tips. Ah. So that's this is just for cleaning, mostly cleaning up the plate, the dish, and I have one with pointy or round or really small, so um, those are very good tools to have. And so those I are saw from you. makeup, like a makeup, makeup artist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's not just 
Q-tip, ear Q-tips, so I guess makeup Q-tips. Yeah. Yeah, because they're meant for applying makeup. And these are also nice because they don't have a lot of the fibers that are normal. So number seven. This is, I would, um, I guess imagine this as a building block. I, um, when I'm trying to stabilize a sandwich, I will put them kind of insert them within, between the bun and the meat and sometimes I break it into smaller pieces. Um, if I'm styling a burger that does not have a lot of height, I don't want them poking out. Mm -hmm. So I would also do that. It's kind of a similar idea to where sometimes we get a hamburger at a restaurant, they've speared it with something or like a right. club sandwich. But of course we don't want to see it, but it's that same idea of kind of pinning things together and holding it. So it's not going to fall apart. Yeah. Very good. All right. Number eight is going to be this thing. It's um, a bag of something. It's a corn, instant corn flour. Okay. What so, do you use that um, for? Um, this one would be similar to what I guess a skewer does. Right. Um, you, we add water to it and it kind of creates this clay-like texture that you can, um, insert food on top, make them go any direction you want, or as a filler. But if you want to fill something up and then put it on top of it? Yeah. Like fill the bowl like a up? Bo so a bowl or the inside of a burrito. Um, there's so many different usage. Yeah, a lot of times if they want to have a burrito shot where the burritos may have been cut open and kind of fanned out like that, it's the burrito's not actually filled all the way through with the ingredients that we see. It's all masa from maybe at one inch back and then you just put the ingredients in. So the yeah, or so mashed potato. I guess say, why why masa versus, I mean, other things, I guess mashed potatoes, masa would be very similar, or is masa thicker or something? Well, those are just, they're called instant. So, so does the mashed potato, they're very fine. So you, and you just add water. And it's quick. It's quick, yeah, I think so. You don't have to cook it, do you, for it to no. thicken up? No. Okay, Oh, well, that's excellent. All right, number eight. Number nine. This looks fun. Number nine will be uh, this uh, my blow dryer. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> That'll curl your hair. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you know I have yeah. to look good while I'm working. Now this one is a heat gun. It, it um, create much more hotter air than a uh, blow dryer. So sometimes, let's say, if I want to create a brown spot or melt cheese or um, what else would I use it? Use it a lot on the tops of pizza to well, kind of melt kind of cheese, melt yeah. the cheese, and create those little kind of brown, crispy parts on the right. top yeah. of pizza. Yeah, melting cheese on a burger. Right. Um, so you can add more brown marks a little bit right. with this. So that versus the, well, I don't know. We, have, we don't know what this is yet, yeah. so. <laughs> <laughs> this adds more of like a general browning where the, the yeah. next item will do more of a, a burning. So maybe I'll keep this here and that well, trade you. leads us to our number 10, which is a blow torch. Number 10. Um, that, I just had to say that. <laughs> <laughs> this also create brown spot, but I wouldn't normally used to melt the cheese because it creates that really intense brown looking. It would burn uh, the cheese really. Yeah, yeah burn it more than just melt it. Yeah. yeah. But if you want to do stuff like a barbecue grilled look kind of um, shoe, then you don't really need to run that giant grill. You can just use this to achieve a lot of the so similar So if I've got a steak and you want to have those lines on the steak, is it to oh, do with this? No, that I would do, um, I would either grill it on the pan that has a line or I, I'll use a um, metal skewer. That, that, the metal skewer, or I have it right here. What do you call this? Gosh, electric truck oh, starter. Yeah. Number 11. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but this would be like more like a grill steak, um, the outer edges, okay. crispy edges. Or like barbecue chicken or yeah. ribs or something where you want to have that little crispy part. Here's ways to do Let's look at that here. Yeah. So this one is an electric charcoal starter. It's meant for like when you have a, a grill uh -huh. at home, like your Weber grill, and you yeah. want to start your charcoal. So it's obviously a heating element. It's really hot, but this can be used to create those seared the black lines. lines as if it was cooked on a grill. Right. So they can, you know, go tss, 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 Oh, that's really you know, cool. That kind of thing and do it nice and uniform. So there you have it, 10 items from Anna's Food Styling Kit. Actually, 11 items from Anna's Food Styling Kit, but that was a bonus item here at the Slender Lens. So, 
this is a great kit to put together if you want to put together the items you need to be able to style food so when you're on set you can work with the food and just make things look fabulous. We're going to see a lot more of this from Anna in our food download. Ed and I put this together. It's a really, it's Ed's download. He's a great food photographer and talking about how to shoot and do food photography. Yeah, we're going to run you through uh, six different setups and different recipes and give you a lot of practical tips on food styling, composition, lighting, some uh, business practices to help you get ahead in food photography. I've been on set for a long time, but already after one day I've learned so many things from watching Ed work, things that I did not know before. So if you get over to thesunlens.com, you can get the download today, teach you the things you need to know about food photography. There's great information about working on set and working with window light. So get over to thesunlens.com where you can purchase your download today. Keep those cameras rolling. And keep on clicking. That's right, 11 items. Oh, this one is a ceramic one. I just really like how thin the blade is and it cuts things like um, hot butter. What is cuts that? Through, uh, cuts, through, hot cuts through things like butter? Like hot butter? <laughs> yeah. Like a yeah. hot knife through butter. Yeah. Like a hot knife through uh, avocado. There you go. <laughs>